Hello everyone, how you doing? It's Fuzzy from Fuzzy's Ghost Models here with something extremely exciting. Now this just arrived in the mail today. I've got it airmail from China. I had to get it on get it on video as soon as possible. It's this lovely beast. It's the new Great Wall Hobbies A10C Thunderbolt 2 in 148 scale. So what we're going to do today is we're going to have a look inside the box and we're going to figure out what we think. Anyway, let's go. All right, so the box, artwork's been out for a while. People have seen it on the internet. It's really nice looking. It's got uh, a couple of A10s drawn with some ordnance, which is what they do the best. And then on the side, there are the four schemes that apparently come with it. And then on the other side is a little close-up of a scheme. All right, well, enough of looking at the scheme stuff. Let's break into the box and see what we have. So here's the box. All right, there's this white box here. We'll have a look at that. There's all kinds of sprues. All right, yeah, we'll uh, set this aside and we'll break this puppy open and see what we got. So, starting with the big main, looks like it's got the main wing spar underneath and a fuselage. Let's have a look. Let's open it up. All right. So let's have a look. Nice close up there. Look, got some great rivet detail down this underneath of the fuselage. And then some wheel well detail in there. Go zoom in a little bit and see what we look. Yeah, there we go. A few flow marks plastic we won't see those yeah very nice I think that's pretty cool pretty interesting interesting way to map that out eh? <clears throat> looks like we got some uh, flaps as well which are in two pieces penny pod all right now let's break this one open. So this one here, it's the wing sections. Upper wing, which is in one piece. That's really nice. It's very smooth. Uh, surprising that there's rivets on the underside of the uh, fuselage, but there's not fuse that it's not uh, rivets on the wing. Kind of interesting. I don't know if that was intentional or not. I don't. The, the, let's have a look. Hang on a sec. Let's go back. Yeah. So the the rivets that are on on the fuselage, they are all raised. All the panel lines are engraved, but the the rivets that you see here are all raised rivets, which kind of really adds to the. Uh, see this kind of adds to the uh, texture on this we can zoom in a little bit yeah these are all raised rivets all right let's get back to it we'll go back so the wing one piece wing which is interesting and then the other sprue has Looks like the spine, the upper spine, which again has some raised rivets on it. And the horizontal stabilizers also have raised rivets on it, just like the real thing. Um, these ones here are recessed rivets along that side. There we go. Yeah, so these, these are all engraved rivets, whereas these are raised on the horizontal stabilizers and the top spine of the aircraft is also raised rivets all right 
Let's see what else we got. Uh, there's some engine detail here. Two sprues, these are the M sprue for the A10. Oh, look at that, eh? Got some really nice turbo fan detail. Look at the blade, two sets of blades. Nice compressor detail. Finally, finally a kit that's at least trying to do the engines. And it looks like these are countermeasures. So there's two of those. Those like that looks really nice. That's that's fantastic. Bonus. All right. Got lots of little bags here, so bear with me. All right. So then we have this one here. It's got the gear bay doors, some of the landing gear looks really nice as well. Ejector pin marks seem to be limited somewhat. These are closed so it won't matter here. These are the open versions. So minimal uh, ejection, ejector pin marks which is really nice. Some nice detail on the landing gear here. And next bag I'm just so excited to get to get this there hasn't been a good 48 scale a10 model in quite some time well it's never been all right so there is the uh, one of the pods one of the targeting pods which is really nice good detail on that and then this one here sprue O which, oh, look at that instrument panel. I gotta zoom in on this one. That's a pretty nice relief on that instrument panel. Is it not? I think it is. That's yeah, really nice. And then the uh, combing on the, for the cowl looks really good. Really good. Really, really nice detail on this kit. Holy, holy moly. Holy moly. Uh, okay, I don't know where to go from here. <laughs> all kinds of, like there's all kinds of little bags in this box of stuff. Uh, okay, so that's weapons, 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 weapons. Weapons and pylons, so we'll leave those for now. Then there's this bag here, which is Sprue November. And here we have basically some antenna, different antennas, pitot tube, pitot tube, some little bits and greeblies. It all looks really, really good. Plastic is uh, not super soft. It's not super crisp either. It's like hard. It seems like it's right, right in the middle where it should be. And then we have two of these, but are they the same or are they just packaged in the same one? Yeah, so there's an L and a K. And these are the lower pods for the landing gear. And yeah, those look really nice as well. All right, we have this other large sprue here. And it's a sprue I. It's got the cockpit tub. Some of the other cockpit details, the seats, sidewalls. Well, look at the oh, detail, it's fantastic. This has to be some of the sidewall for the uh, nose, nose gear. There it is there. Engine pod detail. 
Yeah, you, this is absolutely fantastic. Like, let's zoom in a little bit on this. All right, so let's start over here with the seat. Like, look at that seat detail. That is pretty freaking nifty. Right here, seat sides, other parts. Like, there's there's the sides for the there's the sides for the inside of the cockpit, the the padding. And the cockpit tub itself is just outstanding. Like, wow, wow. The insides of the wheel bay, nose wheel. There's some more detail there. The horizontal surface of the, of the nose gear and then the reinforcement plates for the pod, the engine pods. And then I like this. This here has the inside, I'm, I'm guessing, but this looks like the inside of the, uh, the main canopy, which is fantastic. Fantastic. Wow. <laughs> wow. All right. What else do we have? All right, we have some fuel tanks. Actually, we'll put the fuel tanks over there for now. So here we have the fuselage sides. I'm sorry this is such a jumble, but uh, I had to clear off the bench of the uh, all the Phantom parts that I'm building right now, the Tamiya Phantom, because I just want to get this on video because it's just so exciting. <laughs> anyway, so here is the two halves of the fuselage. Uh, the ladder door stowage area. Zoom in a little bit. And uh, as you can see, again, the back of the fuselage, this is all raised rivets, which is pretty cool. These, this, most of this is, uh, most of this is engraved with some of the some of the screw screw heads in that are, are uh, protruding, which is really awesome. Like it just looks outstanding. This had to be 3D molded. Just the molding along the side here is just so nice and crisp. All the detail there on the lower part of the nose, the fuselage. Wow, wow. Then we have all of these things here for weapons. Let's open this one up because it's got the, uh, the pylons in it. I'm so excited. <laughs> All right, so here are the pylons and they are solid piece, one piece mold. So there's no one half or the other half. Detail looks absolutely outstanding. What I really like is it's got all the sway braces as well. Something usually missing from most kits. That is fantastic. And then along in that bag too were a couple of GBU 12s. Now you can see the, the warhead section with the forward fins was slide molded. I can see a little bit of a seam through here, but still Having those fins on there like that looks really good. Minimal assembly on those. Uh, there's this bag here with the tanks. Main tank and some other stuff. So there's the tank, the main fuel tank. Big one, pretty standard. And then we have the ALQ-184 jamming pod looks really nice the NAQ 33 pod can't I can't remember the names of these things but the old brains get a little old it doesn't remember as much as it used to and then the sponge gets full and starts ejecting stuff out so then there's this one here which are there's Two Mavericks, AGM-65s in the bag. 
and they look really nice. Got a launch rail on each one. Also in that bag was the ALQ-133 jammer. It's pretty nice as well. Another bag of goodies. They're all packaged in little, in separate little bags. And it's, it's a bit of a pain in the butt. Bear with me. All right. So, GBU-31, big, big JDAM. Looks pretty good. Then two uh, rockets, Lao 131s. And more armament, because what's an A-10 for but to carry bombs, right? Okay, so here we have four GBU 28s, sorry, 38s, and they are also JDAM type. Are they JDAM or are they just thermally, thermally protected, I guess? No, it's gotta be a JDAM. Anyway, maybe not. I don't know my bombs that well. Anyway, got four of those. And the last weapon package here that I can see is comes with two sidewinders aim nine L's and they got these fine fine little tiny thin wings on them little fine details Really, really nice. All right, well, that's that's really cool. Oh, and there's this one here as well. All right, so that looks like the tail. All nice raised rivets. That's pretty cool. And then these are stuck together. These have to be the uh, the engine exhausts. They're also all got, has raised rivets around it, and they are very nice as well. I really like the feel of this plastic. It feels like it'll it'll go together quite nicely, except the glue and all that. Um, what else do we got? Oh, yes, there's this white box which has no labels on it, which is inside, and I'm gonna guess that it's the clear parts. Yes, I'm correct. Clear. So I'm gonna carefully open this up because I don't want to scratch it. All right. There we have the clear. Here, let's put uh, this underneath. Oh, that kind of blew out the light, didn't it? All right. So as you can see, it, the clear is very, very clear. And I, even if I shine, get the reflection of light on it, there's very little distortion on it at all for plastic. Um, the because the canopy shape, um, it's next to impossible to mold it without the seam line down the middle. But uh, I will be posting a video on how to remove that and any other ones, P51s, F16s, F15s, they all have it because the canopy comes around and tucks in a little bit. So it's almost impossible to get a mold in that shape. If it was like this, no problem. But because it's kind of tucked in at the bottom, it's extremely difficult to mold without that line across the top and get a good quality mold. But anyway, these look really nice. Um, I'm going to tuck this back in for a second because I don't want to scratch the front. I will be scratching the, 
the mold line off. But we'll get to that when I build this build this uh, model kit, and uh, we'll show you how that's done. So what else is in the box? This. That's right. Comes with a big chunk of. Uh, hopefully it's not lead. I mean it's it's from China, so I don't know. I'm not going to take it out of the plastic, so I wouldn't want this to be lead. Uh, but it is quite quite substantial in weight. It's definitely got some some girth to it. So I'm going to leave that in the box. It's going to attach to the side of the box. And so then we have the destruction manual. It's got a lot of pages. Um, this version, because it's the initial release, has 3D printed decals for the cockpit. I'm going to zoom in on these because I've used uh, 3D printed cockpit decals before. My favorite ones aren't from China. I think uh, they aren't from Ukraine either. They're from Ukraine's enemies. They seem to have mastered, somehow mastered uh, what they're doing. But let's have a look at this. I'm going to zoom in on this and see what we've got here. All right, so those are the panels, the 3D panels that you get from the initial release. And I mean, I'm trying to get, show you, there we go, show you some relief on that. So you can see how it's got some great detail on them. Um, the other company kind of does dials better though. These are almost uniformly flat. The, the instrument dials and the CRTs are flat as well, which doesn't give you that glass look on the dial or the CRT. So these are okay. I don't know if I'd use these though, just because of the detail. Uh, where are we? Here. Like uh, sacrificing that detail? I, I don't know. I, I really don't know. I'm gonna have to see, because the instrument panel was really, really good looking too. So I'm gonna pack these up and uh, tuck those away. All right, let's zoom out a bit. And we'll have a very quick run through the instructions. So typical of Great Wall Hobby, it has a pull out with the parts layout on it so there's the special weight hopefully not lead and uh, yeah so then it's just your standard there's it shows you with the uh, painting of the cockpit and then we just go through the uh, instructions pretty pretty cool the way the wings are one piece through through to each other. And then the engines with the multi-blades on them. But it, it finally, finally well done. And then yeah, that just sits on top, which is cool. And the weight sits okay. Might still put some in the nose though, just for uh, S and G's to make sure that it does not tail sit because that would be criminal. That's one thing we should look at too. Just going back here, looking at the uh, GAO 8. That would probably be best served with a, an aftermarket, some brass and some, uh, some tubes in that, just to make that a little more realistic. Anyway, if we go back and forth. And the landing gear has got lots of parts to it, which is good. And it looks like you can do gear up as well, like I thought. And there's that nose, that tail, tail piece there. Gets all the sensors put on it. And the flaps and ailerons. Even the uh, even the elevators are separate, which is kind of nice. And the 
horizontal stabilizers and the rudder. They also look like they are separate. All the antennas, some of the slime light stuff, cockpit canopy, boarding ladder, etc., etc., and then all the business end, which is all of the weapons. Comes with all the weapon markings, which is good. All the stenciling for that, much appreciated. Same with the pylons. We've got a few, uh, looks like a few markings on there as well. Just gonna go back for a sec, just wanna have a look. Yeah, okay, that's good. Then it gives you some configurations on loadouts. Then the stencils, all right. Now, so it gives you a little bit of photo etch. This is a bit of slightly bent through the airmail process, but looks like they're just slime lights. That's all they are. And then uh, the decals, which I'm gonna hold off for now. We'll just, uh, let's have a look at different markings. So there's A, which is Afghanistan from 2018. It's got the hog with a shark mouth on it, which is kind of cool. Black snakes. And then we also have another one. This has got the hog's head on it from the Air National Guard from 2008. And C is 2020 version. It's uh, got the, is that the hog mouth too on it? Can't, don't know. I don't know my fighter squadrons for the Air Force for these. My apologies. It's got a little color on the tail, which is kind of cool. And this one here has got the, it's the flying tiger. So it's got the shark mouth on it. Traditional stuff from 2011. And then the last set of markings. So you got five choices is from uh, Pacific Air Force 2016. It's got some nice checkerboard on it. 51st Fighter Wing, the 25th Fighter Squadron. That's very cool. All gray, all the, uh, none, of the none of the greens for the seas. And then we'll have a quick look at these. Let's zoom in a little bit. Quick look at the decals. So there's the weapons. And you can see that looks really good. There's a minimal, minimal carrier film. These are made in China, they're not cartographed or anything. And here's this section here. Go in a little bit more. You see you got the uh, instrument panel decals, flat 2D decals, and some of the countermeasures. So these are all the stencils for the aircraft. They look pretty good. They're a little on the flat side, which is okay, I guess. I don't usually paint, uh, my paints usually aren't flat when I start, so, or when I finish, so I, putting flat decals on makes a little bit of a, a contrast they have to try and deal with. And here is the main sheet for the squadron markings. Very cool stuff. Lots of, lots of teeth and mouth, good stuff. Anyway, that is fantastic. Oh, and like I said, I was so excited. I got, uh, package was delivered as I was leaving for work for the night and uh, took a picture of the, of the box cover and put it on Instagram and said, look what I got, look what I got. Of course, who wouldn't, right? And uh, yeah, so this is very exciting. I remember building the Tamiya 48 scale A10 way back when. It's got a lot, it's old, you know, poly caps for the, the weapons and all that kind of stuff. Like, and uh, the old monogram one was okay some fit issues, had the uh, 
ailerons open for for dive brakes and all that kind of stuff and then the engine faces were all one piece same like the academy stuff and i know uh who was it uh i think hobby boss released a c or was it the, no academy released a c and you know this looks way better the hobby boss one i was talking to uh, someone at uh, heritage con was having a nightmare comes with the whole a Gao 8 8 gun and it doesn't fit inside and there's all kinds of fit issues so this one is promising I built one other one other uh, Great Wall Hobby kit it was their T33 it went together really nicely had some good detail plastic was a good quality so I have high hopes for this anyway sorry to rush through it it's kind of convoluted and everything's everywhere but this is I just wanted to get this on on camera right away because this is going to be this is clearing off the bench and start building this so i want to thank you for joining me in this mad unboxing uh, i'm fuzzy from fuzzy's ghost models if you help if you want to support me link down below for uh, buy me a coffee that would help a lot i love my coffee and uh, hit like hit subscribe hit the notification bell so when the other ones pop up for this you won't miss them and uh, we'll see you soon Thank you very much for your support and we'll see you on the flip side.